Hi folks, we're going to talk about removing the ignition coil from an Acme engine that is equipped with a points and condenser style ignition. Now, to identify that, you would look on this side of the engine here, and if your engine, if your Acme AL or ALN series engine has this little square box with a button on it, that's where the points and condenser are housed, behind this little box. So that indicates that it's a points and condenser style ignition. Some of the later model Acme ALN series engines, like the ALN, uh, some of the 330s and some of the 290s, did not have this box. There's no box there, and this would be located right beneath the carburetor and muffler, which are typically located right here. Muffler here, carburetor here. I've removed those just to facilitate this repair, though they don't have to be removed for this repair. It just gets clutter out of my way here. Um, anyway, if you don't have this box, you don't have the points and condenser, and the ignition coil is easier to get to on those engines because you don't have to remove the flywheel. On this style of ignition system, the points and condenser style ignition, the ignition coil is actually behind the engine flywheel. So that's why we're shooting this video, because that's not a terribly intuitive thing to take off. So, on this particular engine, the gas tank's in front, so I'm removing that. There's two bolts on the top and then a little tab that tucks in on the front of the engine there. Uh, on many of the engines like this in circulation, the tank is mounted on the back side of the engine and doesn't need to be removed for this repair. Um, engine models affected are the AL series uh, Acmes, that would be the AL215, AL290, and AL330, and also the ALN215, uh, 290, and 330, again with points and condenser ignition. So I've removed the front shroud. There are actually four bolts holding it on, but I only had one left in there. Uh, this is also a good time when you've pulled the front fan shroud off. It's a good time to check and see if you've got a, a bunch of grass and junk stuck up in here and plugging your cylinder fins, because as the engine runs, it sucks in outside air, and if there's any airborne material in that air, it'll get stuck in here and eventually blow your head gasket because it'll cause the engine to overheat. So it's a good time to clean that out and blow it out with an air compressor or whatever as well. So now we're down to kind of the guts here. Um, now normally to remove the flywheel nut and get the flywheel off the thing, I would just use a half inch impact gun or something like that and a 27 millimeter socket. But I'm assuming that not everybody has an impact gun, so I'm going to show you the way to do this that doesn't require an impact gun. And that would be by removing the spark plug And I'm going to put a screwdriver in here. I don't know if I can... You know, I can't really determine where the piston is. I would probably need a bent piece of wire to put down in there. But anyway, if you can, you can probably look down into the hole with a flashlight and just determine that the piston is kind of at an angle in here. It's right in here. So you have to look in the spark plug hole at an angle and determine that the piston is down somewhat in the bore. Then you take a length of you know, kind of braided nylon rope. This is actually starter rope out of a, like an eight horsepower engine, which doesn't have any hairs on the outside. The hairs can get stuck alongside the piston and cause problems later. But if it's a, if it's a nice braided nylon cord with no little hair sticking out of it, it's safe to put down in there. So you feed this sucker down in there. I'm gonna make sure where the engine is in the rotation here. Let's see, yeah, that would be down. Let's see, there's, I'm going to rotate it over here. All right. I'm going to feed about a foot of this in there. And you got to kind of feed it down at this angle to get it down into that cylinder bore. So we're, what we're doing is we're, we're going to kind of plug up the cylinder with rope. We're going to fill the cavity between the, uh, the, the piston head and the top of the, the cylinder head with some uncompressible object that's soft enough not to do any damage. Boy, it's having a hard time going in here. Get down in there, you. Slowly, slowly, we're feeding it in there. Just doesn't want to go too well. I think I may have too big a diameter rope here. I may have enough in there to make it work. Let me try. So what I'm going to do now is put the, my wrench on this and roll the engine backwards. Yep, came up against it, so that's good. We got enough in there. 
So this is standard thread. It's not a left-hand threaded nut or anything, so it's just lefty loosen. Oh, there it goes. That one wasn't too tight. Sometimes they're a lot tighter. But as the piston came up against that rope, it just couldn't turn any further. It couldn't compress the rope any further than about yay thin. Now we remove that. This will come right off. Now we're down to the crankshaft and the flywheel. Now, the flywheels on small engines are all held onto the crankshaft on a tapered shaft. That is, the portion of the shaft where the flywheel sits has a taper to it, and it's jammed onto that taper by the nut. So just pulling on this thing all day will not get it off. Now, I could use a big puller, like a gear puller, but it's really hard to use a gear puller on this because there's very little clearance behind the flywheel on this side. Acme makes a special puller for this, but not everybody wants to spend 80 bucks to, for a puller to get it off the engine. So here's an, a trick that was actually showed to me years ago. I'm going to thread this nut back on here so it's just past the end of the crankshaft. The crankshaft is just going to stick out just slightly. There it is. I get a little bit of crankshaft sticking out toward, uh, past the nut. This is going to protect the threads of the crankshaft. I'm also going to turn this thing and orient the keyway. You can see the keyway that where the flywheel is keyed onto the shaft. I'm going to orient that at 12 o'clock, straight up, just for reference. Then I'm going to hit the flywheel right here, right on these fins. And I'm hitting these fins in a direction that will not cause the fins to break. If I were to hit the fins this way, you'd snap them right off. Or if you hit them this way, you'd snap them off. I'm hitting the fins this way. One, I'm going to hit it once at 12 o'clock, once at 6 o'clock, and then I'm going to smack the center of the crank. And usually it'll jump right off of it. One, two, three. Done. Now, I'm going to take this off, kind of jam that nut a little bit. There it comes. So the first two hits sort of cock the flywheel slightly on that taper, and then when you strike the crank, it basically drives the crank out of the inside of the flywheel, and the thing jumps right off of there. Notice that I have used a brass hammer. This is kind of a soft-faced hammer. You can use brass, copper, uh, or some softer material like that. There might even be aluminum hammers out there, although they wouldn't be very heavy. A rubber hammer will not do this. It doesn't generate enough shock. Uh, also, a steel hammer can be resorted to, but you're taking a risk because the steel, uh, the crankshaft is also made out of steel. So if you hit that with a steel uh, hammer, you could deform the crankshaft. So anyway, there's the ignition coil. Got my T-wrench here. It's held on by 8 millimeter headed bolts. Uh, which is the same as 5 sixteenths for those of you who don't have metric. Although if you're working on this engine, you better have some metric stuff. We'll take this off. There is a wire running over to the points, right over through here. If this were an, a, an engine with an electric starter on it, you'd see the electric starter coming through here, and you'd also see a charging coil under here, which recharges the battery. This is a manual start engine, so it doesn't have any of that junk on there. Uh, but you can see this wire goes over here, and it goes into this point box to connect to the points. Let's take off the point box real quick. We'll see where the points and condenser are located. Uh, usually there's a throttle cable coming down from the handlebars and going through this thing. So when you swing this box off, it can just hang there, kind of supported by the throttle cable. If you don't want it in your way, you'd have to remove the throttle cable clamp at the bottom, which is still hanging there. Pull the cable out, and then you can take the box completely off. Here are the points. Here's the condenser. Here's the wire coming from the coil. Right here. It's this white wire, which usually is actually has an orange loom on it. This one happens to be white. And it's connected onto the points by a little screw right here. Some of the some of the models have a nut here, a little stud with a nut. Anyway, you loosen that up, take that off. And then this wire can be fed back through this housing. You kind of have to dig it down, dig down in here and get it up out of here. I'm pulling that from this side. There's a little spring-loaded tab right here that holds the wire down so it doesn't get out into the flywheel as the flywheel rotates. Some people want to just bend that tab up and get the wire out from under it. Bad idea because what will happen is if you bend that tab just a little too far, it won't spring back in. And then it will rub on the back of the flywheel and you'll get this horrible scraping noise while the engine's running. So you're better off pulling this out this way first like I just did, and then feeding it back through here like this. And then you do the assembly of the new coil in the same motion. That is, you bring it through here, then you bring it through there. Two motions. 
So we've got this loose. Now we've got our coil wire, our, our spark plug wire on the outside of the engine. You can just bend these little tabs to get this fan shroud out of the way. This comes off and the coil wire actually screws into the coil. So I'm just, or I'm sorry, the uh, spark plug wire screws into the coil. So I'm just gonna rotate this around in an unscrewing motion. And it's basically just gonna unscrew right out of the coil. There it is, coil fell right off. So it just kind of threads through the side of the block there. Down inside this hole on the coil, there's a threaded stud that just threads up into the center of the wire. If this wire needs to be replaced, it's actually just metallic core plug wire that can be bought at any auto parts store. Uh, you don't use the fiber core or carbon core wire. This, this requires the, the metallic core. And uh, when you install your new coil, screw the coil wire into it, feed all your wires through, get everything tightened down. There is no adjustment on this ignition coil. That is, you just bolt it down. There's no way to adjust the air gap because you couldn't see it anyway when the flywheel was on the machine. And uh, the points should be gapped at about 18 thousandths maximum gap. The screw to adjust them is this Allen headed bolt right here. And um, you do that after you've got the coil installed, of course. And if the points and condenser need to be changed, of course, we have those here at our tools as well. So that concludes this segment. Uh, reassembly is just the opposite order of assembly. You can leave the rope right in there and just roll the engine around until it contacts it again, get the flywheel good and darn tight. If you're using a, a breaker bar like this, I mean, if you have a torque wrench, you can actually put it to about 100 foot-pounds. If not, just... Uh, Two grunts, right? And uh, there you go. Good luck.